Hello everyone, and in this video, we're going to start off on our very first player. Okay, so to start off, I actually changed the tile texture. I still have the text texture, but I created a new texture for the background, and it looks like it looks like grass. And all it is is it's just a box that's green with added noise. Okay, so let's let's get started. So, I'm going to create a new package. And I'm going to call this entity. I'm going to create a new class in this newly created package. We'll call it player. Now, player is also going to need something, but We'll create this in a little bit. So, we'll have our player constructor here. And we're going to create a few more methods here. One is going to be an update method. And this is going to take in a float delta. We're also going to take in a window we're going to take in a camera and we're going to take in a world yeah that, that's that's quite a lot and you'll see why we need all these in just a bit we're also going to need a render method and this will take in a shader and a camera Okay, now let's get started on the model of the character. And the model of the character can be found in the tile renderer. All we have to do is just copy this, all the vertices data, the texture data, and the indices data, and go ahead and copy this if you wish. And we're just gonna place this in the constructor of the player. We're also going to have player take in a model as well. So now that we have the model for the player and this, we're also going to need a texture for the player. And for the texture, I'm just going to leave it as the test PNG that we had you may have another texture you may want to use for your character but at the moment I don't oh, okay that's the reason okay so now that we have our texture and stuff let's go ahead and render our player here so We'll have our, sh we'll bind our shader. We'll set a few uniforms. We'll set the sampler to zero and the projection to, hmm. We'll have it set to camera dot get projection just, just camera.getProjection. Sorry, I was thinking of something else to add to it, but we'll just use camera.getProjection for right now. Then we'll bind our texture here. Bind that to zero. And we will render our model. And just to make sure the uniforms are correct. Projection and sampler okay it's been a while since we used these okay so let's run it and we don't have anything that's because we didn't add our character into the main class 
So underworld, I'll create a new player. And I'll also update this before world. So player will be updated before world. And what we pass into delta is we pass in frame cap. So we'll also put in our window, camera, and world. So it's giving us an error, and that's because frame cap needs to be casted to a float. We're using frame cap for the delta, so that we I'll get to that in a minute. It'd be more easier to explain this once we actually get to the player movement. Okay. So now let's just let's just get our player to render. So after the world rendering, we'll render our player. So now let's make sure our player renders. Eh, you can kind of see it. It's that little, it's that little speck right there. Here, let, all right. Let me just comment this out real fast and see how it now. See how it is now a perfect, perfect four perfect squares. Well, if we render this now, see that little tiny white speck in the middle? Yeah, that's where our player is. We don't want that. So we're going to create another class. And this class will actually allow all of our entities. So like if we get into like enemies and stuff, this class will be used as well. So I'm going to create it with the entities and I'm just going to call this one transform. Now this is going to have all of our, it's going to have all of our positioning and scaling inside this class. And if you wish, you can also have rotation if you decide to add in physics. So our first one is going to be public vector 3f and we'll just call this one pos and we'll create a vector 3f for scale so we'll add our constructor and initialize these So I'm just going to have these for default. And that should be, oh wait, never mind. Sorry, we, we need one more method and this is going to be a public matrix 4F. And we'll call this get projection. And this is also going to take in a matrix 4F. We'll call it target. So target, is just going to be scaled by our scale and it's also going to be translated with our position then we re then we return target okay now for adding this it, it's simple we just add in a transform and that should be it. We need to initialize it. And we'll set our scale. We'll 16 by 16. This part doesn't really matter because our game is not 3D. So you can have it as you can have it at any value. But I don't I don't think it works for zero, so I just keep it at one. Okay, so where we pass in 
camera get projection into our projection uniform variable here get rid of camera dot get projection and instead we're going to use transform dot get projection and we'll pass in camera dot get projection so now that we have this we should be able to see our player now he's right there now let's move our player so now it's time to move the player so in the main class where we have our input code to move our camera around we're gonna cut this we're gonna keep it and we're going to paste it here and we're going to replace camera dot get position with transform dot pause and replace dot sub with dot add so do this for the rest of these okay after that we should be able to run and our player moves really really fast he's gone oh there he is this is where our delta variable comes in and we just multiply all these values with delta now our character should be more under control that's a bit too slow so I am going to have 10 okay that's better now why are we using Delta well right there that is one reason but I want the character to move 10 units in a second and in a second that's 60 frames per second so when we create our frame cap here this is in one second divided by 60 frames so for every frame the character is going to move this amount and once those 60 frames have passed he eventually moves 10 units okay so that's it for the movement now that he moves around let's get the camera to follow him and this is where camera comes in now all we need to do is just have camera set position and we're going to set this to transform dot pos and multiply this by negative here is world of world comes in so world get oh we don't have this method well I'll add this in just a bit so we need to get the scale and put this into a new vector 3f so that way it doesn't ruin anything so here once our player gets to the center of the screen the cameras just gonna start following him but now let's actually create this method here in the world class get scale and of course we're just going to return scale now when we play the camera should move with the player so now that we got our player up 
we could do a lot more stuff with this player too, you know? There's a lot we can do now. So, I'll see you in the next video.